आनंदमानंद कर प्रसन्न प्रेम स्वरूप ब्रज भावयुक्त योगींद्रमीड्यम भवरोग वैद्यम गुरु कृपालु प्रणमा नित्रजे वसत नवनीत चौर गोपांगना चुकूल चौर अनंत जन्मार्जित पाप चौर चौराग्रगण्यम पुषम नमा नम कमलना भाय नम कमल मालिने नम कमल पा नमस्ते कमले क्षण यो ब्रह्माण विदधाति पूर्व यो वै वेदाश्च प्रहिणोति तस्म तग्व देवत्मबुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षुर्वै शरणमह प्रपद्ये devoted souls there is a question that comes into the mind of many people and that is i do believe in god i am a believer and i do know the scriptures a little bit i read the ramayan i read the gita so i read the scriptures a little bit and i do sadhana on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis i do engage in devotion i do go to the temple i do have puja done at home from time to time but i think there should be something else that i am doing i must be lacking in in some way because i am not changing from within i don't see any transformation from within and i am very confused i am dissatisfied I don't have that satisfaction that I should have the satisfaction that comes from devoting oneself to God I don't have that So what am I missing what more should I be doing I'm putting in the time many people in the world put in um, e- easily put in one hour on a daily basis for devotional practice but still they're thinking I'm doing this diligently but I'm not feeling the difference I still have my anger intact. I'm still greedy for the world. I still am very sensitive. If anyone says something to me, I am, am crushed. I have a big ego. I am not changing from within. What more should I be doing? When a person starts thinking this way, then he soon realizes that he needs a proper guide. to to lead him on the path the spiritual path then he starts realizing with god's grace 
that he cannot go from point A to point B in the world without a map or a compass or GPS or directions from someone. He doesn't get from point A to point B by himself. And he thinks, how can I go on the spiritual path by myself, on my own, without any help? So then he seeks direction from God. He sends out a prayer to God. And the prayer goes like this. I need some guidance. I don't know where to find the guidance. And when he starts praying like this in front of God, then very soon, or even immediately, God sends a guide. That guide is known as the Guru. Without the Guru, we can do sadhana, we can practice devotion in many ways. We can read from the scriptures, we may recite the names of God, we may recite Vishnu Sahasranam and Nalita Sahasranam on a daily basis. We may do all sorts of fasting, we may perform all sorts of rituals, but without a proper guide, a genuine guru, we will never become satisfied. So when someone thinks, I'm not satisfied, I think there should be something else I should be doing, then a prayer goes out to God from his mind, and that is the prayer for a proper guide. And God has said in the scriptures, you need a guru to come to me. You need a guru to teach you even the ABC of spirituality. Mundako Panishad says, Tad vigyanartham sa guru meva bhigachet samit pani shrotriyam brahmanishtam. A shrotriya brahmanishth guru is mandatory. God says, if you want to know about me, you need to go through a guru. And the guru is one who fulfills two conditions shrotriyam brahmanishtam. Shrotriyam meaning he must possess a complete mastery of all scriptures without exception. He must know the four Vedas. He must know the 108 Upanishads. He must know the Shad Darshan. Nyaya, Vaisheshik, Sankhya, Yoga, Purva, Mimansa and Vedant. He must know the two historical scriptures, Mahabharat and Ramayan. He must know all the scriptures thoroughly. But then the question arises, who can know all the scriptures thoroughly? There are so many scriptures and they have divine knowledge. How can any human possess complete mastery over all scriptures? God says, well, that's why the second condition has been put in place. And the second condition is Brahmanishtam, that the guru must be God-realized. He must be a practical knower of God. He must not be a seeker like us. He must be someone who has reached the destination. And after reaching the destination, he has now come to us to help the rest of us. He comes down to the world. He descends to earth, not because he has to, not because he's obligated to, but because he wants to. Such is his nature. So God has told us in the scriptures, in the Vedas, eternal Vedas, that we need a guru. And the guru has been proclaimed as one and defined as being one who destroys ignorance from the mind and who gives light of knowledge. The very word guru means gum rauti. Gum rauti ti guru, the Vedas say. Girati agyanam iti guru. And these Vedas say, Grinati gyanam iti guru. Guru is one who destroys ignorance and gives knowledge. The highest knowledge, the knowledge of God. 